Believe it or not, Juventus being 7th after 15 matches in Serie A isn't the worst thing that's happening to them right now. Before we go into this, I feel like my like goals have still been quite low, so if we can get a thousand likes on this video, that would be absolutely fantastic. So what's been happening? Well, Juventus have been allegedly accused of accounting fraud. They've been doing this to ensure what is called plus valenza, basically an Italian term for capital gains. An accounting term for profit earned from the sale of an asset in this case players. Those involved in the alleged accounting fraud include, but are not limited to, Chief Financial Officer Stefano Serato, Vice President Pavel Nedved, and the man himself, Andrea Agnelli, who if you recall, played a massive role in the Super League back in May. Also, I'm not exactly shocked that he's involved. This man has literally sold tickets to Mafia-linked supporters groups. Like, this isn't even the worst thing he's done. People have gotta know whether or not their president is a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. But this whole plus valenza or capital gains thing isn't exactly uncommon. I mean, clubs will find pretty much any single loophole or do any little shady dealing to make sure that there's a profit on the balance sheet. Take Derby County, who used expected recoverable value to push back expenses in order to fall within EFL regulations. We're back. We're back, boys. We're back. Now, in this case, Consob, the regulators of the Italian market, opened an investigation into Stop. Juventus's club revenue from player all. trading. Covisoc, which is the commission set up by the Italian FA to monitor teams' finances, highlighted 42 out of 62 suspicious deals from 2019 to 2021 for Juventus. There are other clubs involved in this, including Napoli, Parma, and Sampdoria, but Juventus are like the big one we're talking about here. There's also been intercepted phone calls involved involving members of Juventus's management further adding to the suspicions. It is said there's a value reaching up to 90 million for Juventus's player swaps, but only 3 million of that changed hand. Specific transactions being investigated include the Pjanic Arthur deal, which even Roman Molina said himself was illegal. For more information about who Roman Molina is, there'll be an annotation up there. Another deal though was the Cancelo Danilo swap in 2019. But there's actually multiple different player swap deals that are drawing a little bit of suspicion. One of which includes the quote-unquote like-for-like like trade. Juve's Franco Tonya moved to Marseille for a fee of 8 million euros, and Marseille's Ake Marley moved to Juventus for a fee of 8 million euros as well. But here's the issue though, both players have significantly lower valuations in comparison to how much they were valued when they were sold off. Another suspicious swap deal was between two youth players. Pereira da Silva of Juventus's U23s, where the value was 7.8 million euros, and Alejandro Marquez of Barcelona B, where the fee was 8.2 million euros. This transaction to prosecutors was not in line with the valuation of players in lower leagues. Then there were transactions like Genoa's Nicolo Revolo, who moved to Juventus for 18 million. In return, Genoa got in the swap deal Manolo Portanova and Elia Petrelli. Here's the issue. Once again, Juventus's values were inflated to high heaven. Portanova was valued at 10 million when he was sold to Genoa. He's not even close to that value. And Petrelli is even funnier, because he's even more inflated. He was sold for 8 million in this transaction, and he's not even worth a million. Thought we wouldn't notice. But we did. But here's the wildest swap deal of them all. This one isn't Juventus though, it actually comes from Napoli. When Napoli purchased Lille's Victor Osimhen for over 70 million euros, a club record, there was a little package that they gave to Lille. This package was worth 20 million involving four players. Orestes Carnesis, a now 36 year old keeper, he only made one single appearance for Lille by the way. The other three were Claudio Manzi, Ciro Palmieri, and Luigi Liguri. They never played for Lille and are actually now back in the lower leagues of Italian football. You see how that sounds just a little fishy? Also I think I remember Roman Molina saying something about this, I mean... I'm just saying. Now, why exactly are clubs able to get away with this for multiple years? Simply because the transfer market gets crazier and crazier each and every single year. I mean, these transfers that I have mentioned were in plain sight on transfer market. You could see them, anyone could see them. But because of how extremely inflated the market is, Nicola Pepe for 72 million, we barely even notice these small transfers where players are literally having their values doubled, tripled, quadrupled. Now I've heard that Juventus could actually have one of their titles stripped away. Yeah, makes sense there. And I've also heard that they could be potentially relegated if they're found guilty of false accounting. 
and that's where I kind of disagree. If we were around the years of Calciopoli, sure, yeah, I, I could see that. I think the gap between the riches and the not riches has gotten even worse than before, and, you know, Serie A very much rely on that Juventus TV money. I mean, you remember this Super League when all the clubs involved just got like a slap on the wrist and that was pretty much it? So if you are rooting for Juventus to be relegated, I wouldn't exactly be too optimistic about that. Now this is a story that is going to continue developing. This is only into its initial stages. We're going to hear a lot more about this because this is literally an investigation being made by the regulators of the Italian markets. So surely we'll get updates and I'll tell you guys about that as well as the story continues to develop. But just remember that Juventus and the other clubs that I have mentioned in this video are not the only clubs doing shady sh I'm sure there are plenty of more clubs, Italian or around the world, that are doing the same thing and they just haven't been caught yet. Because like I said before, transfer windows are like frenzies right now. It kind of distracts us from what may be happening behind the scenes. But I'd love to hear what you guys think down below. But of course, a massive shout out to our patrons, Janos Balas, Adroit, Daniel Ortiz, Joseph Bonfante, Victor, Dominic Griffin, Emmett Shea, Lewis, Big Bird, Cash Getty, Exos Mubobo, and Tomicus. If you want to join the Patreon, there's a link down below, annotation up there. Follow me on Twitter if you want, you can follow my Instagram, follow my TikTok, trying to get to 3,000 still, and you can follow my inactive Twitch. But until then, I'll see you guys.